Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, March 24th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here are tonight's top stories. Tonight, how your bank may be a part of the snitch society and a look back at domestic military operations. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. I mean, I guess gun confiscation didn't happen in Katrina either. It's all over the news that we're against the troops or we hate the military. No, no, we hate the military being used by the globalist. Well, it seems that we've really struck a nerve reporting on the Jade Helm 1-5 military exercise that's set to take place this summer. We are now being attacked on all cylinders, uh, coming from all different sort of media outlets that are out there. If you're not familiar, the Jade Helm 1-5 is scheduled to take place uh, between July 15th and September 15th across parts of Texas, California, Arizona, New Mexico. It's going to involve Green Berets, Navy SEALs, and other special ops forces. And the plan specifically details the effects that this exercise might have on local civilian populations, including increased phone calls to police regarding suspicious activity. And there's going to be increased helicopter activity at night as well. So, of course, this was all something that really concerned us. We thought we probably should go ahead and report on this since it's going to be affecting uh, at least seven states. Now we've got another article on Drudge Report today saying that this military training exercise could be expanded to as many as 10 states. So this is affecting a large swath of the country, but we are just conspiracy theorists. We've got Glenn Beck talking about us on his radio show, uh, The Army Times, uh, Stars and Stripes, Vice News put out an article today called Conspiracy Theorists Think an Army Training Exercise will bring martial law to the U.S. this summer. Well, first of all, we did not say that. This is written in such a way that if there isn't martial law this summer, they can say, oh, see, conspiracy theorists, it's not martial law. Uh, what we're trying to point out is that anytime there is a military drill being conducted on American soil, people should be concerned. It's not normal that military helicopters are flying over civilian areas in Miami and firing rubber bullets, and the people, local civilians there, have no idea what's going on, and they're afraid. And now those are the same type of uh, exercises that are going to be being conducted in Bastrop, Texas, now in Florida, Utah, places that are listed as hostile. So that's what we're talking about. We want to know what's going on, and they're not really releasing any information uh, until further. Now, we want to consider what our American ancestors thought about the notion of a standing army. James Madison said, the means of defense against foreign danger have been always the instruments of tyranny at home. And that is what concer concerns us. Now, joining me now in studio is Rob Dew. I mean, for people that aren't really familiar with what we do here at InfoWars, we have reported on so many different military exercises throughout the years. Why has this one struck such a nerve? Well, just like when you look on the map and you see all the states, what we have is a lot of different pieces to make a giant puzzle, which at the end is basically uh, FEMA detention camps and uh, the military on the streets confiscating guns from Americans. That is what we believe is the end game. I, I, I firmly believe that. You look at all the preparations that are going on, all the acclimation. A lot of this, we're not saying martial law is going to happen, but what we are saying is that by having more military on the streets, working with civilian authorities, and then working with civilians, you're training the people in these areas to think that it's okay, mm -hmm. like it's normal to have troops walking around on the streets confiscating guns like we saw in Iowa back in 2009, uh, like we actually saw active operations in Katrina. But it, it all kind of goes back to this civilian inmate labor camp program, which is the Army working with the Prison Bureau, the uh, Federal Bureau of Prisons, to actually get laborers, laborers from the civilian sector and have them working on Army bases. You can actually, this is just Part of the plan, uh, page 145 of the book, 9-11 Descent to Tyranny, which Alex Jones released in 2002, it just talks about, well, there's 12 installations at the different camps uh, and different forts in the United States, prison camps. They have off-post programs where they're taking prisoners, bringing them in, and having them work on different projects. So actual work camps mm -hmm. with civilians working for the Army. And 
I mean, I don't know if you think that's creepy. I think that's super creepy. And it goes on from there, as you mentioned, Garden Plot, which has a lot of uh, interesting uh, tidbits in here about minorities, about the increasing poverty levels, exactly. increased violence. What we're seeing now, we're seeing when you these have the Soros minority groups. groups threatening the police. Right. We yeah, we see all this uh, kind of coming to a head now. But I want I want mm -hmm. to remind people about there was a uh, this is for, for the United States Military Police, Fort McClellan in Alabama, and this is uh, back in April 2006. They released the civil disturbance operations, which outlines a whole host of activities that they have planned for the American people when a civil disturbance breaks out. And we outline this in two articles. Army Manual outlines plans to kill rioters, demonstrators in America, and Army Course Manual trains soldiers to confiscate constitutionally protected firearms. Now, these were back, these articles were back in 2012. Uh, this, actually, this document itself came out in 2006, but we didn't learn about it until 2012. It was finally right. declassified. But it, it talks about crowd control. It mentions PSYOPs, which is funny enough, and in, in one of the army officers contacted Joe Biggs and said, hey, we're just conducting PSYOPs. Well, this plan talks about how they line up to get rid of demonstrators, the kind of weapons they're going to use, what they do when they grab people in parts in areas that are going to have civilian unrest, which is exactly what they're preparing in this plan here, Texas and Utah. And then there's a little enclave in Southern California that is hostile. They're right. considering these areas hostile. And that makes complete sense because just a couple of years ago, there was more than 120,000 signatures on a petition to the White House to allow Texas to peaceably secede. So of course we're hostile here. We don't like the TSA uh, groping us. Um, and now there's even a bill to bypass the uh, federal marijuana laws to circumvent those. Mm -hmm. So Texans really are speaking out. Utah is, from what I'm hearing, from our contacts out there, Utah is a source of a lot of preppers. A lot of people, especially the Mormons, are very prepared. They know how to grow gardens. They can a lot. They they are, I think, are supposed to have two to two and a half years of food on hand. So there, you're, you're going to have a lot of food storage there. So maybe that's why they're being considered hostile. But there's all these plans. You got the scouts training to fight terrorists. You've well, got this article, which was out of the Daily Times Herald Guardsmen to conduct urban training in Arcadia. This was a National Guard unit that was going door to door, and they were asking about weapons dealers, arms dealers, weapons caches, and they were working with the local community there that they say adopted them, because we interviewed the actual guy, and the lieutenant colonel in charge of it, and he's like, oh yeah, no, this is no big deal. This is what we do all the time. That same year, uh, you have the National Guard at the Kentucky Derby. You've got Army. Uh, assisting the U.S. military, assisting in Vancouver for the Olympics. So just the whole thing of getting the troops out on the streets. And then you go to Katrina, mm -hmm. where we had National Guard going door to door, confiscating firearms. And in fact, I want to go to this clip that I played in a uh, in a report I did about two weeks ago. And it's a, nas it's a National Guardsman. He, he lists where he's from and everything and talking about the operations they did at night, where they actually went door to door and confiscated guns. It's really scary. Um, I was with the 45th Infantry Brigade and Delta Company 1st of the 279, 2nd uh, Platoon, um, during Hurricane Katrina. I've always wanted to get a hold of you guys and kind of get the word out there for those that still have that slight hesitation in the back of their head that gun confiscation can't and won't happen here. It already has. And I was only 21 years old, just really gung-ho, really dedicated to the Army, especially to the infantry. And uh, I did whatever I was told. Let's see. The first thing we did was we got a, a three-week uh, a book full of three-week-old 911 phone calls, right? And then we had to go around and answering all the phone calls. So we were like cadaver dogs for about three weeks. And in between them, we would run night missions. And here's the thing. A lot of people may think that they'll see this on the news or they'll have time to to get ready when, you know, when the, when the crap hits the fan or whatever, it's just, it, it's a truck. You know what I mean? It's a group of trucks. They pull up, they stack right on your home as we did. And we broke entry. Yeah. We would yell out Oklahoma army national guard. Is anybody in need of assistance? But that's as we were booting in the door. Well, we had a, we had a couple of people uh, resist verbally and they got stuffed and cuffed very violently. Uh, we throw them in the back of the, uh, the five ton or the deuce and a half or whatever. And then we take them out to, uh, the Greyhound bus station, which was the police station at the time. 
So that clip is a perfect example of the other huge psyop that's going on with, oh, we're, we're not going to take your guns. Meanwhile, we're going door to door and we're going to confiscate your guns under emergency settings. Right. And, and what they're doing now is telling the troops, hey, we're going door to door to do wellness checks. Mm -hmm. And so that gets the troops acclimated to going door to door because they're not aware of the big plan either, which is part of our job to educate the troops out there and say, hey, look, when you're being told you're going on wellness checks into areas, you're going to be confiscating guns because that's what they did in Katrina. And, and we've even got that clip of the, of the National Guard walking around, going door to door, street by street, and they even say, hey, I may have to shoot an American. You never know. Right. I mean, crazy stuff. They're not taking the time to say, is this a constitutional order? They are saying, I have been given orders to do this. They've been trained to follow orders, and that's right. what they're doing. Exactly. And they should, they are allowed to disobey orders if they're unconstitutional, and, and, and they need to know that. The military needs to know that out there. But in addition to this, okay, so if you're gonna launch a large operation, you need equipment, you need uh, arms, ammunition, you need Humvees. Oh, and that's what they're doing with this whole uh, military, police militarization right. that's going on across the country since 2006. You can see the big buildup. I've even got the graph right here. You guys can zoom in on that. 432 MRAPs, 435 other armored vehicles, 44,000 night vision pieces. You got aircraft, machine guns, magazines, the billions of bullets. Because what's going to happen is the Army will be out there providing the force. And then mm -hmm. you'll have Homeland Security and FEMA acting as the overseers, telling people which areas they're gonna go into, which areas they're going to cordon off and then surround and contain, take everybody's firearms, and then you're under the thumb of, hey, whatever they want. Right. They can go, hey, we need to vaccinate everybody because everybody's getting sick, so now everybody needs their flu shot. Or we're gonna take your food because you, you may have had two years worth of food, but we're gonna take it and spread it around with everybody else. Just another weird form of socialism. And people don't understand that they they have enough foresight to say, well, let's go ahead and and connect with these local agencies, these local law enforcement agencies. We'll give them this military equipment. We're their friends. We're going to go out. We'll have a beer together. And then a few years down the line, when martial law takes place, they can say, oh, wow, we didn't know that it was going to get this bad. But now we're going to need you guys to go ahead and police on the local level. Use that equipment that we gave you. You know, you're part of the team. And here, I mean, we've already seen local law enforcement saying with a straight face on local news, well, we need these MRAPs for, for veterans. Exactly. I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. They know how to build uh, roadside mines. Yeah. And uh, uh, what is it? Anti-personnel mines. And this same thing happened in Nazi Germany, actually. Incidentally enough, I know we're going to go to the Nazi era, but they would fly in um police officers and I guess whatever their version of the county is, officials from England into Germany before the war broke out. And basically we're getting to know these guys and building up a, you know, a repertoire on them. So when they invaded England, they knew who to go to to say, hey, we need you to go in and find all the infiltrators. So they're treating us like the insurgent force going in to meet the local officials and public servants that are supposed to be on our side and protect us, but they're, they will willingly open their doors to the federal government, open their doors to the army, Oh, well, we need to do this. It's, you guys say it's, it's a hostile, we're in a, a mission situation, so we're going to cooperate with you. Mm -hmm. And that's how it happens. And it's really sick and disgusting how they're doing it. We should be taking all this time and energy and, and you know, doing things to improve the economy, doing things right. to improve our actual border that is being overrun right now that we're doing nothing about, stopping the real drug dealers that are bringing, that are shipping people and drugs and who knows what else across our southern border. I mean, we don't know at this point because we just don't have the manpower down there doing it. We're too busy saying Texans and Utahns are the, are the enemy. Right. Well, Utah did threaten to shut down the water supply at the NSA. So, of course, that's a hostile movement right there. Uh, you know, but Starbucks wants everyone to talk about race. Right. Don't worry about anything yeah, else except race. That's the big issue right now. We shouldn't even talk about this. And people who do talk about it are total kooks because they get fired up when they see the actual plan taking place. Right in front of them and yeah. we go, hey guys, we need to be on the lookout for this. Oh, we're, we're, we're saying it's martial law gonna happen. No, we're not. We're saying the military does not need to be on the streets of America conducting operations that lead to gun confiscation. And that's what's going on. Absolutely. And you know, if Starbucks really wanted to help, they could educate people on some of these plans like Operation Garden Plot, which is going to you know, enforce this martial law because of high unemployment in minority groups or civil unrest in minority groups when there's an uprising with minority groups against local law enforcement. And those are things that so we're seeing. Saw in Ferguson. That's exactly what we're seeing in Ferguson. I mean, we just had um, 
who, who is it, the Huey P. Newton Gun Club, mm -hmm. calling, you know, chanting to kill cops. So we're seeing a more outrageous effort. It's While doing it, right holding firearms, doing yes. an open carry, which that in itself, the open carry is a good thing, but running around chanting, you, you want to kill cops, that's not something we want to see. Right. When when you saw the other gun groups that Jakari, you know, knows and hangs out with and, and, and goes on marches with them, when they go out, it's not about killing cops. It's about, hey, this is our constitutional right and we're going to open carry. Right. And, and, and then, you know, when we have the groups in Spokane protesting about the uh, the police uh, military build up there, and then the sheriff hides and goes on vacation, doesn't want to talk to anybody. See, we're trying to open dialogue with people. We're trying to educate people. We're not hiding anything. Right. Why, why does the army have to hide this stuff? Yeah. Why are they so afraid of just coming out and saying, look, we've been told by the feds that, uh, you know, the Ameri the returning vets are the problem. So we really have to come after you. They're not admitting that. And it's it's knowledge. It's it's what they've said. The They're Homeland the Security is written about it. They're us the documents. That's who are, is providing these documents to us. And we are merely putting out other news reports, local news that is reporting on the militarization of the police. Or these are government documents. This is They're 121 right pages long about how to round up people. Right. How to round up civil disturbance, uh, civil disturbance operations. And it's, it's in the continental United States. It says it on the document. You can yeah, read it. it says there, no warning shots will be fired. Check out these articles. It, it gives you a good breakdown of it. And then you can go read the whole document for yourself, do word searches for it. I mean, yeah. look at all this stuff. Look at the stability police force for the United States written by the Rand Corporation back in 2010. And this was commissioned, incidentally, prepared for the United States Army. This is for a, a stability police force for the United States. Prepared for the United States Army. Do you people get it? Right. Do you get it? This is what it's for. It's for us. The right. army is going to be training to come after us. Exactly. And that's another thing that's been really upset me about this. Uh, when we come back, Joe Biggs is going to be joining us in studio to kind of push back against that rhetoric that saying that this this is coming from people who who aren't we aren't familiar with why they would be doing these We're drills and training. We don't know. It. But yeah, you know what? We're, <laughs> We're going to get Joe Biggs in here and I'm pretty sure he is familiar with with how and why they do conduct these training exercises. So coming up after the break, we'll be in studio with Joe Biggs. InfoWars Life and InfoWarsLife.com is extremely excited to announce our latest release, Winter Sun, a revolutionary type of vitamin D3. Winter Sun is a premium quality vitamin D3 nutritional supplement. It is produced by extracting oil from healthy, nutrient-dense plants known as lichens. Every batch is analyzed for purity and D3 content. It's completely free of toxins and allergens. Simply put, if you want the best at an extremely low price, this is it. Winter Sun is the result of our pursuit of the best source of vitamin D3. The research and development took over two years, but the result, as verified by independent laboratories, is the best vegan vitamin D3 product in the world. Read the facts at InfoWarsLife.com about Winter Sun Vitamin D3. Not only does vitamin D3 promote a healthy mood, but vitamin D supports our memory and brain function, something the globalists are targeting. Visit InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. For many of the police and guard troops, it is an uncomfortable job to do this in an American city. Walking up and down these streets, you don't, you don't want to think about the stuff that you're going to have to do. If somebody pops around the corner. Let me shoot an American. Yeah. So that was a National Guardsman in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina saying just what he might have to do on the streets there in New Orleans, fire upon an American citizen. Now joining us now in studio is returning veteran, a domestic terrorist, in fact, 
Joe Biggs. Watch out, I'm your number one threat. <laughs> exactly. Now, I want to kind of push back against this new PSYOP that's being pushed out there. This is also in the initial Vice article that's attacking us conspiracy theorists. Now, this is Paul Floyd. He's a former Army Ranger and senior military analyst at Stratfor. Now, he's calling the theory ludicrous, and he tells Vice News that U.S. soldiers would, uh, would likely be unwilling to ever institute martial law on their fellow citizens. He says, every person I worked for in the military took an oath to defend the Constitution, so without any pretext or serious reason to do so, imposing martial law in places where soldiers are from would absolutely generate blowback. So this is something that they're really kind of pushing out there now is that, oh, well, we took this oath to uphold the Constitution, so they would never fire upon Didn't American Didn't the president citizens. do that? How's that been working out? Yeah, exactly. So this is what they're kind of putting out there to, to quell the, the concern with that the military is training. I mean, we've for... been saying this for a long time, though. We're not saying that we're not putting this on the backs of the soldiers. We know that these lowly privates, they're not the ones who are going to go out and do it. The big thing is the distinction between a training exercise and something really happening. That's part of the whole overall PSYOP is it's going to confuse the hell out of people at the end of the day. You know, you start seeing helicopters flying around every day and all of a sudden you start hearing guns going off. Is it a training exercise? Is it not? Your, your wall comes knocking down. MRAP, MRAP comes driving in. How do you know when it's a training exercise and how do you not know? That is a PSYOP. Right. I'm not saying that soldiers are going to do that. I don't believe that at all because all my friends I talk to on a daily basis, they back what we're doing here. A lot of them are going to be getting out soon because they think that what's going on is extremely corrupt. I've got a buddy in SOCOM who contacted me the other day who says, I can't wait to get it. i got another year to go, and I'm going to get away from this as much as possible. I think that's a problem, though. We need good people in the Army. We yeah. don't need, which is sad that they're being pushed out. Because, and with the purge going on, with all the, the generals and admirals being you know let go by Obama, I mean, you've got this... The, the guys that aren't following orders that are questioning things, and you told me yourself, you told me today that they tried to push you into an area it, it, it just mentally of you don't ask questions, you just do what you're told. Oh, yeah, when I was a young private, I was someone, I've always been someone who questions things. When someone tells me something, I like to, like, you know, find out a little bit more info about it so I can make a good sound decision on the thing. Right. In the Army, when you do that, you're looked down upon, right. you're frowned upon. They don't want people who think, people who make good, smart decisions and this is in conventional army, you know, regular, you know, Joe Schmo doing PT every morning with his little uh, belt on. You know, they want people who are just going to shut up, not think for themselves, and follow orders. Right, and we see that as well with local law enforcement, uh, you know, hiring people that have a specific IQ and not going above it because they're more likely to take orders. And this is, of course, the danger of having a standing army because a standing army could be used to, to follow the orders of whoever's in control. Well, high-ranking NCOs in the military, officers, use psychological operations against soldiers. Mm -hmm. I know this. Right. I've got buddies who've gone on training missions, coming back after a week or whatever, and like, man, all they did was tell us how to basically screw with private's heads so they would have essentially just follow the orders we give them, regardless of what it was. And then they do stupid little things to mess with kids. They make them go out and look for these invisible items that never exist, or like have them go hunting. take a, you know, a, exhaust samples just because it's funny they get off on it it's a mm -hmm. psyop like oh yeah go get a, uh, an exhaust sample that'll be so hilarious and the kid is just following orders he goes right. and he's holding a plastic bag to an exhaust on a on a huge truck not knowing what's going on that's what they do they're screwing with the guys so when it happens how do they know when it's happening we, like we said in katrina mm -hmm. they send these guys out here 82nd airborne out there walking around with live ammunition, taking guns. How do we know, as American citizens, that that's not going to happen again? Right. That's all we're doing is questioning what we've seen in the past and what could happen in the future, because there's a lot of civil unrest going on. Ferguson, all, the, all these little riots that are picking up all over the place. People are pissed off. People are starting to wake up, and that's what's scaring the government. We're right. not promoting violence. We're not saying anything at all. All we're saying is, is look behind the narrative they're giving to you because sometimes it's a little bit more than what you see. Right. We're saying, you know, why does Homeland Security have uh, targets that look like citizens, like ladies, women. old ladies, pregnant women with a gun, little kids? Right. I mean, those are the kinds of questions we should be asking as a culture, uh, not whether Texas and Utah are bad states or if the feds are and, and with the Army are doing these exercises, then we should be worried about them. But back in, back in 2009, I was in uh, the G20 in Pittsburgh. We actually went to uh, the 
uh, Air National Guard base there to say, hey, you guys say you're having some National Guard. How many are going to be out running security for the G20? And we were totally shut down. We were told to leave. We left. Then they went and contacted the Allegheny County Sheriff's Department, who contacted the rental car company and got our phone numbers through that, started calling us up saying, hey, you guys need to come out and uh, meet us. We need to change out your car. They were disguising themselves as the rental car company to get us to go out there. And then when we didn't fall for it, we're like, well, the city's shut down. We can't leave. They said, oh, well, we're actually the sheriff's department. We think you guys might be terrorists. Oh. For going up there, driving up with credentials saying, hey, we just want to ask a couple questions. That's it. That's how they treat anybody who, that's why they're going after you guys. Because anybody who asks a question must be stomped down, must be told they're bad, must be, you know, just vilified in, in front of everybody now. Like this is nationwide right. now, this vilification that's going on. And it's all because, you know, I sent you that document. You looked at it and you go, this is bad. See, but the funny thing is, though, is they go, people, these operators will be conducting suspicious activity. Now, when me and Josh yeah. go on all these, uh, you know, little adventures, we've gotten reported places, who are the first people that mess with us? We're out investigating. The cops come up, harass us, stop us, detain us for what they say. Suspicious, suspicious activity. activity. We're doing the same thing. Why are we in the wrong for seeing something that looks very suspicious? Right. And questioning it. Right. Yeah. See and they're attacking. They're attacking us on all fronts because we're over the target. Yeah. Right. When you're exactly. over the target, they fire at you, and they're firing with all cylinders. They're coming at us with everything they got because they know we're exposing what's going on. And what we need to have is every American right now, if you know these operations, where they're going to be, you need to call those counties. You need to call them and say, hey, you don't need to allow this. You don't have to accept this invitation for this Jade Helm 1-5 exercise. Because I'm going to tell you right now, from being in the military, we have a ton of operational facilities where, can train, where training can be conducted on military soil. That's where it should be done. A and you guys went property. to AP yeah. Hill where it was set up as an American town with American signage. Yeah. Engli in, all in English. Right. Yeah. There's, you know? So there, there's churches. So they can prepare to come after yeah, us through this instead of, it looks like instead of in working with the local or, authorities. Yeah. Right? Like I said, you train how you fight. You're going to train in an area that's going to be similar to your theater of operation. And when we go to these training facilities in North Carolina and Virginia and we look and the area that they're training for is a church. Yeah. A soccer field, an underground subway, fire station, all these different places, that has to start setting off alarms in your head. You don't have to be that awake to understand what's being trained for. Now, they can try to bash us all they want. I'm not going to take that. It's a psyop. Mm -hmm. I talked to a buddy at SOCOM down in Florida clearly stating that it is a psychological operation going on. It's going to be used to condition American citizens to be used to this, to desensitize them to all this crap going on. And, and if you question it, you're a crazy conspiracy yeah, theorist. Yeah, exactly. There, there's right. no problem with questioning stuff. Yeah. Well, I think also, too, to acclimate our military to train to operate in, in the area where they're going to conduct these. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, That's the whole thing. They're now getting in their mind that, oh, I'm not fighting in Iraq. I'm going on a wellness to... check. Yeah. I'm going on a wellness check. I'm not gun confiscation. I'm just making sure everybody's okay. But you got to be, the right. thing is, though, is, when you ask a soldier straight up, hey, would you ever take part in something like that? Would you ever take part in a martial law operation? They're all going to look at you and go, no. But what's going to happen is a PSYOP that's worked by these high-ranking people in the military, when they tell the troops, oh, no, we're just going to go do a training exercise. Mm -hmm. We're going to go do that. It's a wellness check. We're going to go do this and that. These guys don't know. And then all of a sudden, the orders come down. Oh, well, this is part of the training. These guys already know. They're part of a, an Op 4, which is uh, an operation. Uh, it's basically a bunch of guys who are pretending to be bad guys. So they're going to be like, oh, these guys are op for It's okay. You can go ahead and detain them, put zip ties on their arms, throw them to the ground. It's okay. It's part of the training. Meanwhile, this person's like, They're role uh, players. They're going to act like they don't want it. You got to make sure they, you know, they're, they're going to be really acting yeah, really well. Yeah, make it believable. Because they, they've done exercises like this where they yeah, go, I'm what, an American. What, don't put me in the camp. But what happens when it's a real home where there's a family not knowing this is going to happen? Right. right. And the high ups are telling the soldiers, hey, no, it's just a training exercise. These guys are really good actors. They're screaming and kicking. That's part of the whole thing. These guys are actors. Exactly. They know what's going on. And next thing you know, it's something real. It's not a training exercise. We're not saying that that's what's happening. We're saying that it's very possible based off of things we've seen in the past because history tends to repeat itself. Yep. And 9-11, actually, if you go back and listen to the air traffic control tapes, when it first starts happening, they're reporting that there's hijacked planes. Somebody comes on and goes, is this part of the drill? They right. go, no, this is not a drill. They were running a drill that day right. of planes being hijacked and flown into buildings. Coincidence? Wasn't that Dick Cheney there you in go. charge of that? Oh, that's we'll never thing. know. Yeah. You know, we'll never know who is really in charge. That's the thing. It, you're, that's crying wolf. Exactly. Right. And you do it enough, you get people conditioned. Yes, people get confused. They don't know how to react. 
and then lives can be lost. People will get hurt because someone's going to go, oh, these guys are just playing around. It's just a, it's just a training exercise. Meanwhile, right. people are being hurt. Right, and the, this is something, a statement about dangers of a standing army. When the president issues an order, the soldier isn't going to reflect on whether or not that's a constitutional order. The soldier's job is simply to obey the president, carry out his orders. Yes, that's what you're conditioned to do. His commander-in-chief is the boss, not the Constitution. You follow the orders. So, And they're getting them younger and younger. I mean, they're right. training the scouts to go after terrorists and vets with guns. I mean, this I mean, is, in, in, this in is on all levels. In the state of Washington, if you call 911, the operator will answer the phone, and ask a question whether or not you are a veteran. Now, why is that something that needs to be known? Because they're going to come and react to that situation differently because, quote, unquote, we're all trained killers and we know how to build bombs and stuff, which is not even true. 90% not, of the people in the military won't even see combat, much less ever touch explosives or anything like that. So that's just the biggest well, propaganda. If, if they're in Spokane, they're going to come with a giant MRAP. Yeah, program. I mean, th this is out of control. This 1033 program, MRAP's uh, showing up. Tank ambulance in California next year going to be arriving. And it's going to be okay. It's safe because there's a red cross on the side. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I mean, they're going to come right. bust down the wall. And the next thing you know, okay, we can render you first aid too as well. But let's talk about some of the other things that are going on. I mean, just to, just to show you that there is a lot of stuff happening. And w our, our attention is being diverted to Starbucks's race campaign and and Hillary Clinton's email, private email server, and is it okay, is it not okay? And 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 meanwhile, we've got the US sending off a missile off the coast of California, just kind of as a sh show of force to the world that, hey, at any moment now, we could send off a nuke. Uh, this is actually from an Air Force statement, it says, with these launches, we not only verify our processes and the uh, intercontinental ballistic missile weapon system, we provide a visual to the world mm. that the Minuteman 3 is capable of striking pretty much anywhere with extreme precision. So they are launching this off the coast of California, um, basically as China is announcing their new infrastructure bank that it's going to you know, go, go away from the dollar. We've got Russia. Someone came out on the mainstream media uh, saying that we need to put more Russians in body bags so Putin would get the message. And then so Russia's doing massive provoking. war exercises, too. Exactly. They're flying without their transponders. So it's on both sides. There's there's provocation going on, and it just needs to stop. And we need to we need cooler heads to prevail, and we don't need to be going after Americans saying they're the right. enemy. Right. Know, the mainstream media, everyone's pushing how ISIS is this number one threat. Mm -hmm. So why don't you worry about training to fight ISIS? Even though you created ISIS and you've created a problem so big that it's gotten out of control and now we have to put more American lives in harm's way. And today they're announcing that they're going to leave 9,800 troops in Afghanistan instead of pulling them out like President Obama promised Promise. he would be doing. Right. Once and that's again. another huge sigh up for the military. Uh, just announced this weekend, New York Post reported that ISIS released a hit list of 100 American military personnel. And they released, uh, posted online a target list with the names and addresses of 100 U.S. military personnel, and they're calling on their brothers residing in America to kill them. And this is according to Pentagon officials. So now the Pentagon is pushing this out there. They've since taken that down online, but that's just putting it in the military's head. Okay, now we're going to have to be fighting these s splinter cells, ISIS cells here in America. Meanwhile, there are known terror cells that they're not shutting down. Yeah, in York, South Carolina, Islamville. Mm -hmm. That's one of the first stories I brought to here when I first got hired here because I used to live right down the street from that place. And it's been well known. Right. And people know about it in the government and nothing is done about it. Right. And we're allowing these things to happen. It's almost like they're strategically placing these people in there and now they're like shoving in your face. Oh my God, ISIS is in your backyard. ISIS is here. Exactly. ISIS is here. We've got to do these military trainings. Oh my God, they're trainings. attacking. They're they're ballistic, ballistic missiles. Oh, because of Russia and Putin and China. Oh my that goodness. That is fear mongering right. to the T. Right. But where are the conspiracy theorists? Meanwhile, Wisconsin cops are forcibly taking DNA from any for any misdemeanors. They're building this huge uh, database, taking DNA samples. Um, they're going to increase to about 12,000 samples a year taken from, quote, felons. So this is just for simple misdemeanors, um, basically building up this huge national biometric database. Uh, there, we're seeing this all over the country. In addition to that, now we are reporting that banks are being told by the federal, uh, the Justice Department, that they have to report 
anyone who comes to the bank and takes out more than five thousand dollars cash of your own money. So yeah. if, so we know monetary controls have always been huge for the globalists. A it way used to, to be ten thousand. You right. And now and now it's with the dollar declining in value. Now it's five thousand, which is really about three thousand uh, dollars. You know, in, in compared to what it used to be. And it's criminalizing cash essentially. It's going right. to make people afraid. Oh, I'm just not going to use cash. I'll just. I'll just stick with credit. I'll that way they transfer. can follow you. Exactly. They can track all your movements all the time. See, exactly that's what, what people doing. should be mad about that. Army time should be writing about that. Yeah. How people who go and fight for the country have to come back home to a place where their government in return treats them like a terrorist, pats them down, gropes them at the airport, lets illegals fly all over the country, like harasses them, but they give spies them on them, they gives them free, free health care. I can't get health care <laughs> at the VA. Right. And you're going to give it to this guy, someone who hasn't fought for this country. That's a complete and total joke. Yeah, we're pissed off as vets because you're not doing your job. That right. stuff is just out of control. And this is basically all we're trying to do. And once again, like you said, we're over the target. And that's why we're, we are being uh, lambasted by the dinosaur mainstream media uh, once again, but that's what we just wanted to put all of this information out there so you can learn for yourself. Incidentally, with that DNA uh, comment, anybody who's ever been arrested in any of these protests, your fingerprints, handprints are, are taken. Um, mine was, I was scanned by this electronic scanner that I had to put my hands on and hold there and, and zzz, you watch it go up and down. Wow. And it's stored somewhere in some FBI database. I tried to get it removed when, uh, when I was able to get the the charges taken away yeah. from me. But that stuff, that lives there forever. Yeah. And, th and they could do whatever they want with it now. It's it's just disgusting. You're a racist. How, yeah, I know, because I talk about it, I'm a racist. Yeah. But it's just, you know, just by going out there and trying to do, you know, my job as a camera guy, I, I had to give up my rights of privacy to the federal government, who now can track me wherever I want. Yeah, I mean, just to get a driver's license in Texas, you got to give all your fingerprints and... Yeah. You know, so they're they're getting you any way the they gym can. Now you got to give your thumbprint. We're crazy to talk about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you for tuning in to the show tonight. Please hit the subscribe button if you're watching us on YouTube. You can also become a subscriber to PrisonPlanet.tv. There you will find over 18 years worth of content that you will not find on YouTube, and you can also share your username and password with up to 20 people at the same time, and that will really be one of the ways that you can help support our operation. Thanks for tuning into the show tonight, and we'll see you here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.